In this video, I'm going to be discussing the additional panel that Easy Green Screen 8 comes with, and that is the Touch Up Editing Helper. This is not uh, meant to extract your images. You'll use this if you need to do touch ups to your images after extraction. And this panel is just there to save you time in your Photoshop editing. So I'm just going to hit Remove Green Screen. The most obvious thing is you can see that the um, pom poms got erased. You can actually view that against 50% gray, just because I don't like to look at the checkerboard myself. I either like to view it against magenta or against gray typically. Now this mask checker plugin does not actually make any changes to your image. It's just changing how you're viewing transparency. So. Right now we're viewing transparency against magenta. Right now we're viewing transparency against gray. That's changing the Photoshop preference for how transparency is displayed. This is not my plugin. It's an $11 plugin you get on the Adobe Marketplace. I highly recommend it. Anyways, um, let's just get into this panel here. I'm just gonna start top to bottom and go through the options. The first thing is view original. That's going to take us to this top original image layer and it's going to disable the mask, so we're viewing that layer. Easy Green Screen gives you this layer for touching up your images, but by default, this mask is all black, so it's not actually visible. But right now, we're disabling that mask. Um, if you click on View Extracted, it's going to re-enable that mask, and it's going to actually put the it's going to go down to the foreground layer and select that, but now we're viewing the extracted image. If you hit view mask, it's going to go into the mask of your foreground image, so you're viewing the transparency image. So this is just an easy way to toggle through your different views here. The next thing is select subject. This You can run select subject cloud or device, and what that is is in your preferences in Photoshop, there's now an option to run select subject, device, or cloud. And for it to run cloud, you have to be connected to the internet. But this will usually give you a better um, selection, but it does use Adobe's cloud servers. Now, regardless of what your preference is set to, um, this button here will override that. So if your preference is set to device and you click cloud, the plugin is actually going to run a select subject on Adobe's cloud because I made this plugin to override that. <clears throat> and these buttons will not work on an image unless you have the easy green screen layers after you've extracted because this does more than just the select subject. It's actually going to first go to your foreground layer. It's looking for that exact layer name. It's going to run select subject. Then it's going to come up to your layer mask on your original image. It'll set the um, tool to the brush for you. It's going to select the brush and it's going to set your brush color to white. It's going to actually reset the swatches for you. It's not going to select your brush for you, but if you're doing multiple images in batch, once you get your brush set, that'll stay the same. I recommend a brush hardness of 100% a, of a when you do this. And what that selection allows you to do is just um, Um, paint right over the edges because that selection is um, protecting the brush from going over the edges. So it makes it really quick to paint. However, you do want to be careful. I'm going to purposely do this wrong here. I'm going to paint over the edges of the arm too. And you can see that we're losing spill correction on that. Let me undo that here because anywhere you paint, you're painting white into this layer mask here. And when you um, paint white into that layer mask, you're now viewing this original image instead of um, what's below it. So we're losing that spill correction. So areas that you need to keep spill correction you need to make sure that you're not painting over those areas. I don't know, something like that's pretty good. Now I purposely chose this image for this demonstration because 
so I can show you here. If you're painting here and you're not recovering areas like this, it's because select subject is not perfect and it did not select part of that bow that was green. It thought that was part of the background. Um, so in that case, you'll have to deselect and that will allow you, um, you're still painting in this mask, but we don't have a selection made. So if we paint over the edges, this is going to bring back the green screen, which we don't want. And there's other ways to make selections too, um, not using select subject if you want to come in and first make a selection so you can paint over that. But then if you accidentally um, brush back an area, you can go paint black back into this mask. Anyway, that's just a pretty quick and easy way to touch up an image that's got a green area like this. Now, one thing I'll point out too is with this um, select subject, a mistake a lot of people make, and I see a lot of images posted this way where people have recovered. If the area is not supposed to be green, let's say you had area of black or white clothing that had green spill that got removed, I see people painting in this layer, which removes any green spill. So if those areas of like white or black clothing became green and got extracted, you don't want those areas to be green after you've recovered those. So in that case, um, let me paint, it's gonna paint black back into here so I can undo some of that. So in that case, you'd want to go into your foreground mask and you would actually want to paint, oops, I need to be on a white brush, not a black. You'd want to paint in the foreground mask. Now you can see the difference that those areas we're painting back, they have spill correction. So if you were trying to recover areas of clothing that are not supposed to be green, you would paint in this mask. Make sure you click, no, I don't want to do that. Make sure you click on the um, mask itself and not on the layer, but now you can see we've painted in that mask. But for this case, we want those areas to be green, so we would come up into this mask. Hope that makes sense. Okay, the last thing to talk about, oh, actually not, there's a few more things, but um, select and mask here. Let me see, select, let's deselect this. If you click on select and mask here, it doesn't matter what layer you're on. This is going to automatically select your foreground layer and take you into the selected mask. So you would use this if you wanted to um, do any touch-ups, for example, on the hair, which I really don't need to in this image, but if you wanted to do any selected mask touch-ups, you would do so in there. And you notice the pom-poms look like they're still erased there. And that's because it's went into the mask for this foreground layer which if you remember, we did not recover the pom-poms in that layer. We recovered those in this original image layer. So just keep that in mind. And the last things to talk about, which are all meant for the same purpose of these, or not the last, I've said a couple more. I've got a few things to talk about. Anyway, I'm just rambling here, but um, the next things to talk about is the um, select mask plus one pixel, select mask plus two, and then the trim mask one and two pixels. So I'm going to click the select mask, I'll click off the layer first. I can just show you that if you click this, it's going to actually go in, it's going to select that foreground mask for you. It's going to select your brush. It's going to set the brush to black. And that selection is going to be contracted two pixels in from the edge. But it's actually not, the selection made is an inverse of your foreground. So the actual background plus two pixels is selected. And so now when you brush, you can defringe the edge. And I can brush right over that selection because that selection it is, is protecting us from painting inside of that. Another tip too is if you hit Control H on Windows or Command H on Mac, you're hiding your selection But now when you brush, 
you're still defringing, but you are um, not seeing those marching ants, which is a lot of times helpful. Yeah, the select mask plus one pixel is the same thing, but you'll be defringing less. It's only one pixel in instead of two pixels. Okay, and the other two we have that do the same thing but are automated are these trim mask one pixel and trim mask two pixels. Let me go to an area where this will be easy to see. If we hit trim mask two pixels, if I undo that and redo that, you'll see that this edge contracts automatically by two pixels. Now this will have an effect on the hair too, so be careful with that. And when you click this, Oops, I clicked the wrong one. But each time you click the trim mask, it's going to pop you up a message that say it's did that. And I purposely did that. And that way, if somebody is zoomed out here and they just click this, don't see anything happen on the image, they may not realize that they've chopped away at the mask by a couple of pixels. Because unless you're zoomed in, you may not see this. You would really only use any of these um, features if you had a fringe that you were trying to correct for. And like I say, be careful with um, be careful with these trim masks if you got hair you want to preserve because these can chop away at the hair. There are ways with the history brush in Photoshop to use these effectively, but then recover the hair back. I'm going to show that in a different tutorial, so I don't want to drag this tutorial on too long. All right, the last two things to talk about are the um, merge into single layer and copy merged. An issue I see is people will come into their layer. If I hit Control C on the layer, if I open a new document, Control V to paste. A lot of people don't understand that they can't just copy or drag a single layer into a new document. In this case, we lost the um, pom-poms, which makes it obvious because those are on the original layer. But if you didn't have to, to recover pom-poms, for example, a lot of people don't realize they're losing their spill correction. Let's, um, and you can see that we've got all this spill around the edges. You might not notice that if you're against transparency or against certain colors, but you are indeed losing your spill correction, which we can see on the arms pretty evident there. Because this um, layer, this is a non-destructive layer set. So this foreground layer is the original layer with transparency, but the spill correction is in another layer above it. So what we really need is to copy everything as if it was merged or merge it into a single layer. So if you just click merge into single layer, this merges everything into a single layer. Now I can copy that layer in. And now when you paste that in, you have everything as if it was merged and we've got our spill correction and everything looks as it should. Now, if you don't want to merge everything into a single layer, if you just hit this copy merged to clipboard, it's not going to merge everything, but it's going to copy it to your clipboard as if it was merged. So then if you paste that in, the same thing, you've got your spill correction, the pom-poms are there, everything is exactly what you see is what you get. And if we hide the background layer, we can see that it still has transparency applied to that when we pasted it in. Okay, I think that pretty much covers everything with this panel, and I'm sure I'll be showing this in other workflow videos I'm doing. I'll show bits and pieces as I'm doing that in my other tutorials, so make sure to continue watching the tutorials because there's other things you'll pick up with this panel as well. Thanks for watching.